Hey Alpha Nurses, I'm Nurse Sandra from alphanurseguide.com. This is NCLEX Pain Review Lesson 19. We're going to be doing hematological disorder questions. You can find me on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok to get any updates. Links will be in the description. Without the way, let's get started. Question 1. The nurse is reviewing the laboratory results of a client receiving chemotherapy. The nurse prepares to initiate neutropenic precautions when the nurse notes which laboratory result. A. A bleeding time of 3 minutes. B. An ammonia level of 20 micrograms per deciliter. C. A platelet count of 200,000 cells per cubic millimeter. D. A white blood cell count of 2,000 cells per cubic millimeter. The correct answer is D. A white blood cell count of 2,000 cells per cubic millimeter. Rationale. The normal white blood cell count is 5,000 to 10,000 cells per cubic millimeter. When the white blood cell count drops, neutropenic precautions need to be implemented. This includes protective isolation measures to protect the client from infection. Bleeding precautions need to be initiated when the platelet count drops. Bleeding precautions include avoiding all trauma such as rectal temperatures or injections. The normal platelet count is 150,000 to 450,000 cells per cubic millimeter. The normal bleeding time is 1 to 6 minutes, depending on laboratory method used. The normal ammonia value is 10 to 80 micrograms per deciliter. Question 2. A client has experienced several episodes of sickle cell crisis. Which reinforced instruction should be included in the client's teaching plan to prevent recurrence? A. Vigorous exercise is encouraged to maintain cardiovascular function. B. Ice liquids will combat dehydration and should be consumed regularly. C. Wear shoes and socks when walking outside to prevent damage to the feet. D. To prevent opioid tolerance, avoid taking pain medication at the beginning of the crisis. The correct answer is C, wear shoes and socks when walking outside to prevent damage to the feet. Rationale, wearing socks and shoes will prevent wounds to the legs and feet, which heal slowly and frequently become infected in clients with sickle cell disease. Vigorous exercise and iced liquids can precipitate a crisis and should be avoided. Opioid tolerance is not a priority or immediate concern for clients experiencing a sickle cell crisis. These clients experience a great deal of pain and require opioids for pain relief. Question 3. The nurse is doing discharge teaching with a client who has sickle cell disease. The nurse reinforces instructions to the client to avoid which factor that could precipitate a sickle cell crisis. A. Infection. B. Mild exercise. C. Fluid overload. D. Warm weather. The correct answer is A. Infection. Rationale. The client should avoid infections, which can increase metabolic demand and cause dehydration, precipitating a sickle cell crisis. The client should also avoid dehydration from other causes. Warm weather and mild exercise do not need to be avoided, but the client should take measures to avoid dehydration during these conditions. Fluids are important to prevent dehydration. Finally, the client should avoid being in areas of high altitude or flying in a non-pressurized aircraft because of lesser oxygen tension in these areas. Question 4. The nurse is caring for a client with a suspected diagnosis of aplastic anemia. Which tests should the nurse anticipate to be performed to confirm the diagnosis? A. Schilling test. B. Sickle cell screen. C. Bone marrow aspiration. D. Complete blood cell count. The correct answer is C. Bone marrow aspiration. Rationale A bone marrow aspiration will identify aplastic anemia and will identify pancytopenia, a deficiency in erythrocytes, leukocytes, and thrombocytes. A Schilling test is diagnostic for pernicious anemia. A sickle cell screen is diagnostic for sickle cell anemia. 
A complete blood cell count will identify anemia but may not identify the specific type. Question 5. A client with sickle cell disease has been admitted to the hospital complaining of a sudden onset of severe pain in the extremities, abdomen, back and chest. In which priority order should the nurse perform the actions listed? Arrange the actions in the order they should be performed. All options must be used. A. Administer an opioid analgesic. B. Hydrate the client with normal saline 0.9%. C. Administer oxygen. D. Keep room temperature at or above 72 degrees. E. Encourage the client to keep extremities extended. The correct order is C. Administer oxygen. A. Administer an opioid analgesic. B. Hydrate the client with normal saline 0.9%. E. Encourage the client to keep extremities extended, and then, D. Keep room temperature at or above 72 degrees. Rationale. A client in a sickle cell crisis will have pain as the body's tissues become hypoxic. Oxygenation is important, so oxygen is applied first. To decrease the pain from the sickling process, the client is given an opioid analgesic. The client is then started on an isotonic solution to help prevent further sickling. Keeping the extremities extended and not bent decreases sickling risk, as does keeping the room warm. Question 6. The nurse is reinforcing instructions to a client with iron deficiency anemia about iron-rich foods. Which food sources should the nurse include in the discharge teaching plan of a client with iron deficiency anemia? Select all that apply. A. Milk. B. Fish. C. Eggs. D. Liver. E. Cheese. The correct answers are C. Eggs and D. Liver. Rationale, liver and muscle meats, eggs, dried fruits, and dark green, leafy vegetables are iron-rich foods. Milk, fish, and cheese are not significant sources of iron. That's all I have for this video. Please like, share, let me know if you have any questions. If not, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.